Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and this is the much anticipated, much discussed Halloween The Complete Collection 15 Disc Deluxe Edition. And what I'm going to do for you guys is basically an all access pass, a full guided tour on each and every aspect of this box set. First, just aesthetically, going to show you guys everything that's included in the box set, all the cases, all the discs, discuss the special features, the whole nine yards, and then actually sit down and discuss the contents uh, in the box set, the new special features, uh, etc., etc., and then let you guys know whether or not I think it is worth um, the pretty lofty price tag to pick this set up. But now let me preface this by saying that I did not pay the entire, um, the, the full price for this set, which uh, if you pre-ordered it from a Screen Factory, I think it ran you about 150, 160 bucks, but you got a special lithograph and you got the set a few days early. So some of you guys have probably already seen these kind of videos, uh, unboxings and what have you of this set if you ordered it directly from Scream Factory. Uh, if you pre-ordered it from Amazon, the Amazon price was $118. I pre-ordered it from Amazon. I did not pay $118. I got it at significantly less because I had saved up some, uh, some gift cards. So let me just preface by, uh, by saying that. I did not pay full price for this box set. But let's go ahead and take a look at the box set. There it is. There is Michael. There's the shape. There's the side of the box set with the uh, the Halloween pumpkin there. Um, very cool. Here's the back with all the uh, with everything that's included. Michael is coming home for the first time in one complete collection. All ten Halloween films loaded with extra features. And here you see all the films. And yes, I mean, uh, you know, kudos to Anchor Bay and to Scream Factory. They did what uh, very few believed could happen. Uh, they accomplished what many thought was uh, an insurmountable task, which was to bring all of the Halloween films together in one set. But they did. And here it is. Here's all the films listed from John Carpenter's Halloween all the way to Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Loaded with killer special features, we've got the producer's cut of Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, first time on home video. We've got new and vintage audio commentaries, new and vintage interviews with cast and crew, new cast and crew tribute to Donald Pleasance, very cool. New and vintage featurettes, I won't go through all those featurettes, but there's a lot. Uh, Horace Hollowed Grounds, fan edition. Uh, we've got extended cut of John Carpenter's Halloween, basically the, the, the TV cut of the movie. We've got the TV version of Halloween 2. Uh, theatrical trailers, TV spots, radio spots, still galleries, and much, much more. So let's go ahead. There's there's all the all the discs there. And as you can see, each film has its own separate um, uh, disc, its own separate case, which... Um, <laughs> We've seen this in so many uh, box sets where, you know, films don't have their own cases or they double up and there's two or three or sometimes more films on one disc. This is how you do it. All future box set distributors, this is how you do it. Each film should have its own individual case and disc. So let's go ahead and tear this open. And let's take a look at the contents inside. Uh, looks like that comes off of there too. Yes, so that comes off. I'll keep it on for now. Although I do think there is, well, mm, gooey. Gooey. Ooey and gooey. There's all the movies there listed on the bottom and their ratings. All that ooey gooey glue. Hate that crap. There's the back. There is Michael. Standing by the tree. That's a nice shot. That's a cool shot. And at the top. There. Put that back for now. And let's look at the actual films. Let's go ahead and pop out one of the movies. Oh, well, we've got a booklet. Halloween, The Nights He Came Home, written by Michael Gingold. Just flip through there. There's Mr. Carpenter. 
Ms. Curtis. Some nice pictures from uh, from the set, promotional pictures. Pictures from Halloween 2, Halloween 2, Halloween 3. Uh, great stuff there. Of course, there's Halloween 4. Halloween 5. Halloween 6. H2O. So yeah, pretty much every film it looks like gets a little ride up here. A history of the Halloween films. There's Rob Zombie's Halloween there. Halloween 2. Okay, there's a picture. There's a picture of the late Malika Cod with Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, cool. Leave that there for now. And let's pop out. Let's go ahead and just take a look. Whoops. Take a look at the first disc here. This is Halloween, the night he came home. Lo nice touch with the black cases, by the way. The black cases are a very, very cool, uh, a very, very cool little ad there. I think that's very cool. Black Blu-ray cases. Very cool. In here, we've got uh, two discs. And uh, disc one and disc two. And here's everything, all the features and what have you that are on these discs. Audio commentary with co-writer, director John Carpenter and actress Jamie Lee Curtis and Deborah Hill. Feature a cut above the rest. All those, uh, all those features. And I do believe just from... Yes, these are the recycled cases. You can definitely tell if you're holding one of these recycled cases. The plastic is just a little thinner. It's a little flimsier. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot of people take issue with these recycled flimsy cases. Um, I don't necessarily mind them, but you can definitely feel it when you hold them. They're, uh, they're much lighter, and like I said, a little, a little more flimsy. So there's the original Halloween, here's Halloween 2. Oh, cool. Like this, uh, like this cover art. Now, I, I do believe they have all original cover arts for the, uh, for the, uh, for this thing <laughs> and uh, yeah there's Halloween Halloween 2 2 disc all the features there Halloween 3 always really loved that uh, that artwork there for Halloween 3 I think that's really cool just one disc for Halloween 3 here's the features the Halloween 2 and Halloween 3 basically they're the same features that were on the whoops the deluxe edition Blu-rays from Scream Factory. Here it's Halloween 4. Ten years ago, he changed the face of Halloween. Tonight, he's back. All the features there. Audio commentaries. Got, uh, got an audio commentary with uh, Justin Beam. Good fella. Nice guy. Open it up. There it is. Halloween foe. Halloween five. Michael lives, and this time they're ready. But really, were they were they really ready? <laughs> nice, nice, uh, deceptive kind of tagline there. I also remember on the VHS they kept uh, they promoted that this was the edition of Halloween where Michael would uh, take off his mask, which he did in the shadows, and you saw his eye. Uh, here's the here's the special features. There's the late Donald Pleasance there on the back. Yep. Really digging these black cases, by the way. Very, very cool touch there. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Terror, terror never rests in peace. And two disc. One is, the, uh, one is the theatrical cut. One is the producer's cut. Yeah, it would have been cool to have a standalone case uh, for the producer's cut, but I don't mind uh, having them uh, in the same case. Uh, just two different discs. We're really looking forward to checking out the uh, the producer's cut and the special features and uh, uh, seeing it for the first time in HD. But there's all the special features, lots of special features. Really looking forward to checking out the producer's cut, all this, all the new special features that they got for the producer's cut. And again, looking forward to checking it out in HD. Very, very cool. Behind the scenes footage, 30 minutes. Wow, cool. Halloween H2O, This Summer Terror, won't be taking a vacation. There's the back, got some new special features on the back there. 
New commentary with Steve Miner, Jamie Lee Curtis, moderated by Sean Clark. New making of Halloween H2O with Jamie Lee Curtis, Josh Hartnett, Jody Lynn O'Keefe, Nancy Stevenson, Adam Hahn Baird, Tom Kane, editor Patrick Lussier, Malika Cod, Paul Freeman, John Ottman, lots of people. Vintage interviews and behind the scenes footage as well. Very cool. There's H2O. Halloween Resurrection, really clearly, I mean, the high point um, in the Halloween series right here. Thanks to this man. Whew, man. Good, good stuff on this movie. Uh, the special features there. Uh, which, I, really, this should just be an apology. <laughs> just, be, just be the cast and crew just apologizing. That should be the audio commentary for this movie. Uh, or, or just Buster Rhymes apologizing for it. There's the disc. Yep. And, everybody's favorite remake, Evil Has a Destiny, Rob Zombie's Halloween. This is the unrated director's cut, I do believe. Lots of special features there. Uh, Kyle Smith from New York Post says it's one of the most frightening stabathons of recent years. Hang your head in shame, sir. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Halloween, Rob Zombie's. And here we have Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Family is forever. Very, very cool. There's the back, and I actually, I actually really like this movie. I like it a lot more than the uh, than his director's cut. And open it up, and here is the complete collection bonus disc. I'm not sure why they've put the bonus disc for this set in with Halloween 2. Um, really, I think it should have had its own disc. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, or its own case, I should say. But, uh, yeah, they've thrown it in with Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there's all the films. Here's the box. Uh, nice, sturdy-feeling box, I will say. Um, will definitely look cool on your uh, mantle or in your, uh, in your collection, wherever you decide to put it. But, yeah, nice, sturdy, um, nice, sturdy material there. Uh, yes. So, not cheap uh, material there. Very good touch there. I like this cover art here. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. And the, back's, the back cover art as well. Ew, the goo. Ugh, hate that gooey glue they put on everything. There's the back. Pretty cool stuff. All right. So, yes. That is the, the collection. All the films. Do like the black cases. Do like the fact that each film has its own case, with the exception of Halloween 6, the producer's cut. And I do think that the extra disc should have gotten its own uh, its own case as well. But still, those are those are minor gripes overall, I think. But um, yes, that is the full collection, including this booklet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to return and uh, tell you guys about the special features themselves and uh, give you guys my verdict um, right now. All right, people, and where to begin with the Halloween, the Complete Collection Deluxe Edition Blu-ray set, because there is a lot to go over here. I'm happy to say there are a lot of new special features on this set. There didn't appear to be that many on paper, uh, but there are, and what we have are, are, are fairly lengthy uh, features or featurettes um, that are actually pretty good. Um, Halloween, Halloween 2, and Halloween 3, if you've got the previous editions of those Blu-rays, they're all the same. Uh, special features, picture quality, sound quality. So I'm not really going to talk about them, the Rob Zombies Halloweens. They're the same. There's no need to talk about the picture and the sound quality on Halloween 6, H2O, and Resurrection because, of course, they're going to be better on this set compared to the Echo Bridge budget Blu-ray releases. I mean, it's really uh, not even... There's no need to really go into that. It's just a given. These are going to be better picture and sound quality-wise on this set. Um, Halloween 6, the producer's cut, is really the centerpiece of this entire box set. And I'm really hoping that the rumors are true that Screen Factory and Anchor Bay are going to release a standalone deluxe edition Blu-ray of Halloween 6, the producer's cut, for all those people who don't want to lay down the money to get this box set. And I totally understand why. It's a lot of money. It's, you know, in some people's cases, you know, a double, triple, quadruple dip. 
Uh, so I totally understand why you don't want to lay down the coin, but you should absolutely pick up Halloween 6, the producer's cut, the deluxe edition, if they release it, a standalone version of it on Blu-ray. That's the rumor. I hope it's true because it is absolutely loaded with awesome special features. It looks amazing. I've seen the producer's cut several times on various uh, bootlegs with varying qualities. Watching it in high definition was literally like watching it for the first time. Uh, as far as special features go, uh, we have got a 20 minute featurette called Acting Scared with JC Brandy and Mariah O'Brien, actresses from the film, and they talk about their experiences on set and they actually sort of start <laughs> this trend that, that, that goes through that permeates all the special features. Basically, the um, there was a... Uh, there were different sort of camps making the film and there was a sort of nobody knew what kind of movie they were making at least tone wise uh... there were some people trying to make a very classy suspenseful old school throwback to halloween other people wanted a flashy stylish bloodbath so there was that sort of tonal imbalance that just permeated the entire uh... the entirety of the film um, J.C. Brandy talks about going into hypothermia on the set. Um, some pretty interesting stuff there. Really enjoyed that uh, that featurette, 20 minutes. Very, very cool. Uh, next thing we have The Shape of Things, which is an 11 minute featurette with John Carl Beekler, uh, Brad Harden, special effects guys, and uh, George Wilbur. They talk about you know doing the special effects for the film. George Wilbur talks about uh, playing Michael Myers in the film. He talks about uh, how, you know, when they did the reshoots, he wasn't asked to play Michael Myers. He was asked to to do this, to, to, to continue being the stunt coordinator and doing the stunts, but they wanted a different, Mike, a different person to play Michael Myers because they felt he was too big and bulky and that Michael Myers should be not big and bulky. So, um... A pretty interesting documentary there, uh, about 11 minutes in length. Uh, we have Haddonfield Horrors, The Sights and Sounds of Halloween 6, which is about a 10 minute featurette with the director of photography, the production designer, and the DP for the reshoots. And of course they talk about, again, the tonal imbalance of the movie, not quite knowing what kind of movie they were making. Is it a classic, you know, suspenseful throwback to the original Halloween? Is it just a flashy, stylish, you know, bloodbath? And, um, you know that there were different factions on the set the director and the producer were constantly butting heads you had you know uh, the Akkads coming in saying that you know with with their ideas you had Miramax and Dimension and you know the Weinsteins with their ideas and it was just kind of a uh, kind of messy there toward the end we have a cursed curse a nine minute featurette uh, with Malika Cod, Paul Freeman talking about you know the tumultuous making of the film how the rights were up in the air after Halloween 5 that actually John Carpenter had teamed up with New Line Cinema to bid on the um, to bid on the rights to make future Halloween movies I did not know that uh, of course the Akkads aligned themselves with the Weinsteins and they ended up winning the rights and again they talk about you know the tonal imbalance they talk about the infighting they talk about you know that the, the director was really torn he wanted to make a certain kind of movie he had the Akkads in one ear he had you know the Weinsteins in the other ear ultimately you know the Weinsteins had the final say uh, they did the reshoots really sort of behind the Akkads back they had no idea they were doing these reshoots and um, Definitely a tumultuous uh, filming, uh, which was Halloween 6, and uh, yeah, pretty cool there. Yes, I did take notes, so <laughs> I am referring to my notes. Uh, Want to be thorough here, people. Thorough. Uh, we have a six and a half minute feature with Alan Howarth, the composer, talking about him composing uh, music for the film. Uh, we have a seven minute featurette called Jamie Story, an interview with Daniel Harris. It's brief, but there's a lot of info in it, stuff that I had, I'd never heard before uh, on other features for Halloween 4. Um, apparently, when they were casting the role of Jamie, which she, of course, played in Halloween 4 and 5, they sent out this announcement to all the agencies saying, hey, we're looking for this girl. She needs to be 18 to, you know, whatever age, and here's what she needs to look like. And they actually sent a picture of Danielle Harris. They were looking for a Danielle Harris look-alike and not Danielle Harris because she was 17. So she said, I want the role. They said, fine, you want the role. You've got to emancipate yourself. So she goes, she emancipates herself in court, spends all that money. She gets to the set. She realizes this is not... <sighs> She realizes that it's not the kind of Halloween movie that she thought it was going to be. Uh, her character, of course, 
dies very early in the film. It's not a major part of that film. They lowballed her as far as salary was concerned. They told her that her character really meant nothing in the, you know, in the film. And uh, she walked away. Very interesting uh, feature there. Very interesting interview with uh, fairly foul-mouthed Daniel Harris, which I didn't mind. I I like foul-mouthed women. Um, we get uh, on-set uh, interviews with Donald Pleasance, Paul Rudd, Joe Chappelle, Marion Hagen. That was very, very cool hearing Donald Pleasance talk about the film. Uh, just seeing his excitement and his eagerness to want to make a really good you know, Halloween film. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I'm back, here's the sixth one. Uh, he was very excited. He was very eager. He wanted to make a great Halloween film. And um, I thought that was very, very cool. Uh, the other interviews, Paul Rudd, Marion Hagen, Joe Chappelle, also very cool. I'd never, I'd never seen or heard any kind of uh, interview or, or anything uh, regarding Joe Chappelle in Halloween 6. So it was kind of interesting to hear him talk about the film and stuff. So that was very, very cool. We've also got about a 30 minute feature at, that is just behind the scenes sort of home video footage shot by Daniel Farrens, the writer, um, on the set, which was, was pretty cool. Um, we've got a great commentary track. I'm not big on commentaries. I used to love commentaries and I listened to them a lot. I've really sort of steered away from that. I got into a couple of bad commentaries that just sort of turned me off to the whole thing. This commentary for the producer's cut of Halloween 6 with uh, Daniel Ferns, the writer, and how Alan Howarth, the composer. Really interesting to sort of hear Daniel Ferns talk about, you know, how you know he was a huge fan of the series. He got this awesome opportunity, you know, to write Halloween 6, and then sort of, you know, he saw, you know, how it, you know, it, it was, you know, it was a corporate sort of horror movie. You know, they had to test screen the crap out of it. You know, there were so many different sort of cooks in the kitchen. Um, so very, very interesting to, to sort of hear him talk about it uh, in depth. And a very, 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 very cool commentary. Definitely, definitely recommend it. Uh, the Halloween 6, the producer's cut, um, like I said, I definitely hope that it gets its own standalone release because it's it would definitely be worth it 25 30 bucks absolutely to, to add it to your collection great special features on it great commentary the producer's cut looks phenomenal great great stuff there uh we get uh halloween h2o gets a very nice uh two-part uh, like hour long featurette for it we've got interviews with uh josh hartnett uh, uh Adam Hein Bird, uh, let's see who else, uh, Judy Lynn O'Keefe, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is also interviewed in it, but it's the it's sort of interview snippets that she did for The Night She Came Home, which was on the 35th anniversary uh, Blu-ray release. It's also on the, the, uh, the Blu-ray here in this box set as well, so no new interview with her. Uh, but it was interesting to hear, uh, actually, before Jamie Lee Curtis got involved, with H2O, the writer says, you know, the the aim was that Halloween H2O, Halloween 7, was just going to be a straight-to-video release. And he had originally envisioned it as Silence of the Lambs meets Halloween. Of course, Jamie Lee Curtis got involved, the budget got much bigger, and it turned into Halloween H2O. So it's very interesting to hear him talk about writing the film and, and the work he did on the film from a writing standpoint. Uh, Josh Hartnett did a really good interview. I mean, you wouldn't expect him to, you know, someone like him to be on a feature like this talking about Halloween H2O, but he did a great interview talking about, you know, his early career and how he, you know, what, what was going on on the set and this and that. Really enjoyed hearing that. Um, just really, I mean, uh, a really cool overall you know, featurette about Halloween H2O, which isn't really one of my favorite films in the series, but nonetheless, still really interesting to hear people talk about the film. Lots of great interviews. They go really in depth on it. Of course, the controversy over the mask. There's like three different masks in the film and an awful looking, horrible looking CGI mask. And, you know, they were talking about how, you know, talked to Patrick Lucier, the editor, and no matter how slick, you know, he tried to edit the film, it's just so obvious. There's just multiple masks. Uh, it's like Michael walked around with one mask on and two masks in his pocket, and he would just change them out whenever. Um, 
but so clearly you can tell there's just multiple masks used in the film. Uh, controversy over the score. Uh, actually, in one early draft of the script, uh, Charlie, Adam Hine Baird's character, was actually supposed to be the killer in the film. He was supposed to be a imposter Michael Myers. Uh, but, of course, they, they you know, they <laughs> threw that out the window. Um, they also talk a little bit about resurrection and how resurrection was, you know, uh, a mess. So <laughs> that was kind of cool there too. But yeah, overall, really cool documentary, featurette for Halloween H2O. Learned a lot about it. Um, pretty, uh, pretty cool stuff overall. If you're a fan of Halloween H2O, that'll be right up your alley. Even if you're not a fan, which I'm really not, it was still really cool. Um, the bonus disc. And I was a little confused with the bonus disc. The bonus disc has Halloween, the extended TV version, all edited together. On the standalone Halloween Blu-ray, we've got the TV cut scenes just there by themselves, kind of like the 35th anniversary Blu-ray. But on the bonus disc, we've got that TV cut together. Why they couldn't put that on the standalone Blu-ray in the box set, I have no idea. Uh, but we get the extended version of Halloween just on the bonus disc. Um, we get the making of Halloween for the final cut, which is an old featurette from the DVD release. We get a new Halloween 4 featurette that's 47 minutes long called Back to Basics. Uh, interviews with Dwight Little, Alan McElroy, uh, Daniel Harris, Ellie Cornell, Sausage Jensen, Kathleen Kinman. Really, really cool. Uh, new stuff with them talking about the making of the film. Really interesting, really cool. If you're a fan of Halloween 4, you're really going to like that. Like I said, lots of detail, multi-part. I think it's a two-part uh, featurette. A lot of information there. Really, really uh, enjoyed that. They talk about, uh, uh, at one point, Danielle Harris was having a hard time getting into character. So Dwight Little got her, yelled at her, threw her in a closet, turned the light off, and closed the door. That's directing. That's directing right there. Uh, they also talk about how you know, Tom Morga, uh, from who played uh, Jason in Friday Five, was actually the original Michael Myers in, uh, in Part Four before George Wilbur was signed. He was fired. George Wilbur came in. Uh, they talk about how when they first got the masks from Don Post Studios, they opened the box. They're all pink with white hair. <laughs> uh, so that was pretty cool. Really enjoyed that. Uh, for Halloween 5, we have the old uh, Inside Halloween 5 from the old DVD release. We have a new 44-minute uh, featurette called Dead Man's Party, The Making of Halloween 5. Two parts, interviews with, again, lots of the cast and crew. Um, apparently that said, and, and they talk about, you know, we started that way too early. We went into it. We didn't have a finished script. So th literally, they were just sort of throwing ideas around, and then the next day they would go and shoot them i.e. the man in black. They had no idea what <laughs> the man in black was, who the man in black was. They just figured, oh, they'll they'll sort that out in the next one. <laughs> um, basically, on the set, they were bored. They're in Utah. There's not much to do, so they just partied constantly. They were wild, drank a ton, messed around, and then the next day they'd go and shoot, hung over. Again, you can kind of tell that making uh, if you watch the movie. Um, they talk about just sort of how unfocused it was, how messy it kind of was. They talk about how weird Dominic Cothin and Gerard was, the director, and some of his requests were just really odd. Um, so yeah, overall, a really, really interesting documentary about Halloween 5. Also, I thought was interesting was it just seemed like a really unsafe set. Like there was no supervision, well there's no supervision period, but there was like no supervision to the stunts as well. Like they were doing these really dangerous stunts and like there was just just shoot, just do it, just get it over with. So just a weird, it just seemed like, sounded like a really, really weird uh, shoot, but really interesting to hear those stories and stuff uh, from the cast and crew of uh, Halloween 5. Uh, we've got Halloween Unmasked, an old documentary. 
about uh, Halloween, and uh, I think that was on. That's been on previous Halloween uh, DVD releases. Uh, we've got a vintage interview with Mustafa Akkad that's just a few minutes long. Uh, we've got an interview with the Halloween 3 makeup man, Tom Berman. Uh, we've got Horror's Hollow Ground, uh, the old one that uh, Sean Clark did for Halloween 1, and three new ones for Halloween 4, 5, and 6. Uh, Halloween 6 in particular was pretty cool. Those sets... Um, Watching them go to those sets and those locations and talking about Halloween 6 was pretty cool. Really enjoyed that. Um, something weird that I noticed, and I'm not sure if, I, I'm not sure if this is just misprinted or what, but I was looking through my, <laughs> for Rob Zombie's Halloween. It's two disc, but the disc with the film on it is listed as region B. I don't get that. That's a little weird. I've not put it in the Blu-ray player to see if it is in fact region B or if it's just a printing error or maybe they, you know, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's not like I'm going to reach for, Hall for Rob Zombie's Halloween very often to watch it. Uh, I mean, unless I want to fall into a deep, dark depression. But I just thought that was interesting that it is a Region B Blu-ray, or at least it says it is a Region B Blu-ray. Um, yeah. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. Um, so, yeah. Um, that is sort of the bulk of the new special features. I'm not sure why. This bonus disc is really weird, because I'm not sure why they couldn't just put... Basically, all this stuff on the bonus disc on the respective standalone discs. I mean, I guess calling it a 15 disc set sounds better than calling it a 14 disc set. I guess, I don't know. Uh, just kind of weird. Again, not sure why they couldn't put these new Halloween 4 and 5 documentaries on the standalone Halloween 4 and 5 disc. Not sure why they couldn't put the extended cut of Halloween on the Halloween disc. Um, not sure about that, but hey, like I said, I guess a 15 disc set sounds better than a 14 uh, disc set. Um, overall, I mean, my verdict, like I said before, future box set makers, this is how you do it. Each disc needs its own case and, and a nice sturdy box. That is what a box set is. We don't need the pages. We don't need four movies on one disc. This is how you do it. So kudos to Screen Factory, to Anchor Bay. This is how you do a box set for real. Now, is it worth $100 or over $100? In some cases, closer to $200, depending on where you order it from. That really depends. If you don't already own all the films on Blu-ray, and if you're if you're a big enough Halloween fan that you're going to spend this kind of money to get all these films on Blu-ray, I would be kind of surprised that you don't already own these films on Blu-ray, uh, or at least on DVD. Um, so I mean, really, it it depends on on your preference. Uh, are you a completist? Are you a Halloween completist? Do you just have to have everything Halloween? Uh, related. Um, that's that's going to be a big question. Um, and keep in mind, I did not pay full price for this set. I did not pay the $118 pre-order from Amazon. I paid roughly half that because I had saved up some, uh, some gift cards. Now, do I think it's worth $100? Honestly, I think it's a stretch. I think it's a stretch. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of money for a box set. If it was $80, I'd say go get it. Absolutely, go get it. Um, anything over $100, honestly, I would kind of balk at. Keep your fingers crossed. Keep hope alive that we will get the standalone Halloween 6, the producer's cut, the deluxe edition for all you guys out there that, that aren't going to pick up this set because of the price, because that... Like I said, that's sort of the centerpiece, in my opinion, of this entire set. They really put a lot of great features on it, great commentary on it. It looks phenomenal. Pick it up. Hopefully, it'll get its standalone release. Add it to your collection. If you're a huge fan of Halloween 4 and 5 and H2O, like I said, we've got some great new features for those films. Hour-long new feature for H2O. Two 40-plus minute new features for Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. Again just sort of depends on preference. Aside from that, 
if you if you've got the uh, Shout Scream Factory Halloween two and three releases, it's the same. If you've got uh, the Anchor Bay Halloween thirty fifth anniversary Blu ray release, it's pretty much the same. Except here we've got the uh, the extended uh, TV cut. But if you have a previous DVD release of that, then you've already got that. Or if you've got the old box set with Michael's face on it, you've already got that as well. Uh, Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, again, those are pretty much the same. Uh, the picture and sound quality for Halloween 6, H2O, and Resurrection are going to be better on this set than the, you know, budget Blu-ray Echo Bridge releases. That's just an absolute given. So really, it all depends on preference. It all depends on money. It all depends on whether you're a completist. It all depends on whether you're a huge fan of H2O, Halloween 4, Halloween 5, or even Halloween 6, you know, and, and you just want that producer's cut, uh, and you can't wait to see, you know, is there going to be a standalone release? But that's the rumor. I'm, I'm definitely hoping that it is. I would contact Scream Factory. I would contact Anchor Bay and tell them I want a standalone Blu-ray deluxe edition release of Halloween 6, the producer's cut. I do think that's going to happen. Uh, eventually, hopefully sooner than later, and I can absolutely endorse that one, pick it up when it's available, if it's ever available. The box set, like I said, over $100. Personally, I would kind of balk at it. If I didn't have, if I didn't save up some of those gift cards, I may not have picked up this set. I'm glad that I did. Like I said, it's got a lot of things going in its corner. Um, it's great looking. I love the black cases. Again, I love the fact that each film has its own uh, case. Would have been cool if we had a standalone Halloween 6, the producer's cut case. Um, the bonus disc is just, you know, it, it, it doesn't have its own case, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure why the bonus disc is even included in this. Um, again, a, 14, a 15 disc set, I guess, sounds better than a 14 disc set. Overall, I am happy with it. I'm happy for the price that I got it at, which was roughly half um, the uh, uh, the Amazon pre-order so I do think I got a good deal on it I'm very happy with it um, I'll, 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 I'll leave it up to you guys I hope this was helpful hope this was informative hope this video was educational if you picked up the set please let me know what you think of it in the comment section below um, how much did you pay for it do you, do you feel that it was worth it now that you've brought it home that you've dug into it that you've sunk your teeth into it um, so yeah, anyway, until next time, you guys take it easy. Peace.